it looks like the guys over at the Fire and the Kids subreddit were right once again. Right once again. There was rumblings, there was murmurings around flipping Brian Callen being um, associated with Stephen Crowder and his new project and whatnot. And the fact that most likely this will lead to the end of the Fire and the Kid in the way that we know it now. And I guess it's now been confirmed by Stephen Crowder himself via an announcement video and another clip I'm going to play where he basically speaks about the people that are joining him on this new platform that he's going to be launching, that it gives you an idea or it gives you a feeling that the end of the fire and the kid in the way you know it might be soon coming maybe soon coming and it really does kind of throw an interesting predicament over to Bren to brian callen for the most part because it sounds like from and looks like from what Stephen crowd is talking about they put a lot of big money into this project and they're going to be paying callen well they're going to be allegedly producing his next up-and-coming special and stuff and having him part of the be, be a part of the whole crew and what they do so clearly there's going to be a lot of money a lot of opportunities attached to it and and maybe career wise for Brian, especially at this stage of his career, this might be the better thing to kind of bank on. So it'll be funny if he does end up ditching Brendan because that's going to be a lot of people who have left in the past 18 months from the Thick Boy universe and whatnot. But let's go through the clips themselves and then we can kind of assess stuff. So as you can see here from the screen, you've got Steven Crowder. Of course, most of you guys know of him for the Louder with Crowder show that he's got on there. <clears throat> He's got over 5.9 million followers. I didn't, I'm sorry, subscribers on there. Obviously, most of his videos get crazy amount of views. He's very popular within this kind of right-wing grifting kind of, you know, political commentary sort of space. I watch some of his videos here and there, but not really something that I kind of, you know, stick to for a brief period of time because he can get a bit annoying just as a human, not of his views. But apart from that, you know, he kind of does pretty well in terms of the stuff that he covers and his content he puts out there. But he did release this flipping video announcing this new project he's going to do. Controversial YouTuber named Stephen Crowder. It's very offensive. Very offensive. We have a higher standard for monetization. YouTube dragged its feet before taking any action against conservative commentator Stephen Crowder. And we did announce the monetization change that Stephen Crowder was. And it is crying. I don't like it. It's a total bitch move. The conservative demographic is it's quite literally dying off there are a lot of people out there like me like you like our audience who often feel like they don't have a home they're misfits they're not tuning into fox news they're not tuning into a lot of am radio it used to be content generators right who were adding the value to youtube go and listen to most of the podcasts out there right now it is far more pg vanilla disney friendly than what you would hear on basic am radio and there's no fcc youtube demonetizing uh, conservative comedian Steven Crowder. They said he didn't violate their policies, but they were going to demonetize him anyway. YouTube, Facebook, at one point Twitter, these guys should be in the hot seat. It shouldn't be refreshing. It shouldn't be the exception to the rule. It should be the rule. I think Steven Crowder might have just revolutionized the way you negotiate contracts from this moment on. I'm being dead serious. If you want to be with big tech, that's fine. My issue is... Don't claim that you're fighting big tech and then do their best. Steven Crowder said, sleep well, tomorrow is war. It's war! They're literally using this word, civil war, war. I mean that we are in an ideological war. Uh, we really are. We are at a potential tipping point in this country. Who are you reaching if it's not the truth? And Rumble is willing to gamble and let the cards fall where they may and allowing the truth to stand on its own. People are looking- Let's be real. This is really dramatic and really over the top, but it's very well done, isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of got me pumped. <laughs> I want to join the war. Will you accept some blacks? <laughs> Will you accept some blacks? Can I join the war? Can I get a tiki? <laughs> Can I get a tiki torch? <laughs> Can I put on some slacks? <laughs> Looking for folks to fight for them. Hey man, I'm not gonna not gonna cast any aspersions, but I go to a lot of techno clubs, I go to a lot of queer nights, and I listen to a lot of really hard dance music, and I see and I'm surrounded by a lot of gay guys, and I know what a gay walk looks like. That's a gay walk. <laughs> if I ever seen someone walk gay, that is a gay walk. Like, let's just go back there again. Wow, he's got a little bit of um, what well, as Brennan says, a little bit of sugar in his tank, eh? Hey, big boy. What's the matter? I know just what you need. 
again, the details all matter in it. Why hasn't Callan got a flipping handkerchief in his jacket? The team not alone. Did he forget to bring one? Why doesn't Callan have a handkerchief for? Why isn't it there? Why? Look, there's no little handkerchief thing there. Why? You can watch other shows from my club, I'm a blues. <laughs> white guys we are just white guys doing white things fighting against crime the white guys <laughs> you know what F it i'll do it my show will be mug club now how about that i can't do the walking thing i don't have a tux <laughs> I got a onesie that looks like a tux. What's a mug all alone? I know just what you need. We're a team not alone. You can watch other shows from my club. Cause I'm a blues. Okay, so it's a big deal. It's a really big production. They spent a lot of money on this. Um, filming it, putting it together. So I found a log house in Paris. Oh, you guys are <laughs> Honestly, the music is cringe, but let's just say this for sure. They've put a lot of money behind this. This isn't like a, a cheap stunt just for the sake of it. They're obviously doing some big things. And it makes me think because I, I didn't really know much about Stephen Crowder and stuff. So I had to kind of read up about him and whatnot. But allegedly this guy turned down 50 million from flipping What's his, what's his name? Ben Shapiro. So if he turned down 50 million, if he, feel, if he thought 50 million was insulting, him going over to Rumble and shit, he must have got a bag. He must have got a decent bag. And if he's obviously signing these guys on and a lot of these guys, as much as they're kind of fighting the system type of dudes, they also care about the bag. They also care about being paid. So they, I don't think any of these guys are going to be working for free. So clearly, clearly, they are going to be paid well and maybe there's a prospect of them getting paid handsomely down the line especially if they're doing it independently so god damn it man fair play fair play but i'm interested to see what happens with flipping callan going forward with flipping um the fire and the kid because there's no way that guy's going to be able to do you know all the shows that he's going to be required to do on louder and crowder and also do what he's going to do at the fire and the kid you know if there's one thing you know about brian callan his work ethnic isn't the greatest and he's he was always late and will kind of miss shows or you know, you know miss the T-Fat case from time to time because of auditions and whatnot. So you can only imagine what it'd be going through now. Um, Steven Crowder actually talks about more of it as well about what's going to be happening. And this is maybe further clarification that maybe, maybe this might be the end of the fight and the kid as we know it, as he goes through the guest who he's kind of signed on to the next chapter of Louder and Crowder. He's going to donate $1,000 to a children's cancer hospital every time one of the Mets hits a home run. <laughs> Cheap brick. <laughs> Got a kid from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Billy, what's your last wish? I don't know. Can we get a designated hitter in the National League? <laughs> uh, and Nick, I don't know if he's on vacation right now, but uh, he's already doing a show. Just So yeah. that's another show four times a week. You get to tune into Nick. You oh. watch us in the morning. You watch him at night. It's under Mug Club for the same price. Couldn't be happier. We'll also be having him here in third chair, rotating in. Next person we have, it's sort of become... So what's Mug Club then? Is that is Mug Club like his own Netflix and shit? What is that? Is that Mug Club and Netflix? I don't want to... I thought it was like a sponsorship thing. So I guess they host... Oh, okay, it's, it's a... It's a website and they've got videos on it. So you sign up and subscribe like you do with the Netflix. I see how much it is. I'm going to check on my phone quickly how much they, they charge for a subscription. We can find... Okay, cool. $89 per year subscription. Is that good? I don't know. Is eighty nine dollars good? What's that? That's like ninety dollars, right? Which is what seven pounds, seven dollars fifty a month. Not not bad if you like that kind of conservative talk, I guess. I'm organically a home for a lot of comedians. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, by the way, Nick DiPaolo, the a, a big reason we've chosen this. He's always been this guy. Go back and watch Nick DiPaolo on Tough Crowd with Colin Quinn. Go back and watch him on the roasts on Comedy Central. First off, you won't find a comedian to who will have a bad word to say about him, but. All of them know that he has been hard right his entire life. And I'm telling you this, uh, I do think his career, unfortunately, suffered a little bit because of it. He had some yeah. doors closed because of how strong he was in his viewpoint. So we're, we're happy to team up with oh, him. Yeah. another guy. Another guy. This, who, this guy coming up right now, we have a deal in the works. We're going to sign this week with him. Yes. So uh, agreed in terms, all the principal. Right. Yeah. For his next special, yeah. which is going to be straight fire. And then eventually, wow. you know, with different people. 
This next minute, we have to help build a studio. We have yeah. to help get some producers. So everyone, all these contracts are a little bit different depending on who we're working with, which is the beauty of being independent. One of my favorite comedians, uh, you could argue the best storytelling comedian of all time, mm-hmm. Jim Brewer. And it's hard, too, because also the, the sleet is pelting your face. <laughs> 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 and Jim Brewer, of course, a veteran, SNL. Uh, you probably know him from Half Baked. A lot of people, even though he's not a big drug guy, which surprised a lot of people. I just got, I just got sleepy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Good impression to me. And Good he impression. got into trouble when he spoke out against the mandates, the vaccines. Mm. He spoke out when he had something to risk. Are you catching the through line? Mm-hmm. Another person really happy to be bringing on. We have uh, uh, commissioned now his next special which is going to be out of the closet, yeah. basically into the fire, because uh, a lot of you know him because he's a commentator on fight uh, programs, sports, and, of course, friend of Joe Rogan. But a lot of you don't know his political leanings, and he's coming out of the closet with that more and more, and uh, he kind of needed someone to have his back so we could speak about these things. Of course, he's been someone who's been the target of cancel culture as well, to use that term. Brian Callen. I always thought the rule was you had to cover your face. When a man cries, please, you have to, unless you're on horseback looking over your conquered lands, you will return with an army and take back what is ours. Dry your eyes, we ride, and you just f***ing <laughs> <hit. laughs> I will be doing his next special, and he'll also be doing a, at least a weekly show. We have some episodes yeah. that he'll be doing with you, talking yeah, about yeah. Uh, theology with Gerald. That's a new show we'll be doing as well. Yeah, and then he'll be in third chair, obviously, on uh, Thursdays. Rotating right? in, yeah, so, Thursdays he'll yep. be Theology with fucking Brian Callen. Imagine. Absolutely insane. So, he's got a lot on his plate. Got a producer special with Lando Crowder. Um, they're going to have a show he's going to be doing on there weekly. Um, I think the Friday Kid, they feel, with what, twice a week now, right? Is it Tuesdays and Thursdays? So, a lot on his plate. And if we know one thing about Callan, when he's got a lot of these plates, something has to give. How many podcasts has this guy started over the time? He had the mix, what's that? Mix Mental Arts, the Brian Callan show. He had that thing about driving in, in the car, talking to comedians. Remember? During the pandemic, he, like, he did a couple of shows about that. He had the, uh, what you call it? He had uh, the non-book club something. What's that thing called? Something, the non-book club book club. Um, that show with fucking Sam Tripoli. Like, so many things he starts and just doesn't follow through on. So I'm going to be interested to see if he follows through on this. But I think because there's going to be money attached to it and taking away my um, hil- hilarity at reading this, it'll be funny because this is probably the best thing for him to do if you think about it career-wise. Because Hollywood is over, right? He got accused of rape. Even if he didn't do it, it's over. There's no one, no, you know, no production company, no network, no recording studio, whatever they call them, these things are going to want to stand behind him and invest money only for him to be, you know, subjected to a million questions about the rape when it comes to him doing press. It's just not going to do well for the movie and what they're doing and they invest too much money and they lose it all the time. Look what's happened with cocaine bear and shit. You know, it's just not going to happen. So if that's the case and, you know, doing the show with the final kid with Brian, Brendan has obviously, I think it's run its course. They're clearly not friends like they were prior. The magic is gone. It's not funny. Um, and, you know, the baggage around them is just too palpable. It's probably the best thing to do is to kind of evolve and kind of move on and maybe lean into what most people do that are cancelled. The right wing grift. It's like the common through line. Whenever someone gets cancelled, the first thing they do is sort of like declare their sudden surprise. Oh my God, all this time I was conservative. I had no idea. It's like this kind of awakening they have because now they suddenly have no other career options. So you might as well lean into that. So it is what it is, isn't it? And the guy also, let's be fair, he has two families to look after. He has alimony payments to still pay. He has this new baby now that he's looking after. And clearly, you know, from what I've seen online, the ladies that he's with you know they don't essentially work so he's basically having to fund and pay for everything around there and you'd imagine somebody at his age also doesn't want to be asking for money from his parents and stuff so hey you don't want to be having having an allowance for mommy and daddy when you're flipping 60 years old that's a little bit embarrassing so if you do want to earn your own way through life and you do want to evolve your career into this new chapter this probably is the best way to go about doing things it's probably a little bit more respectable than sitting down with brendan talking about dicks all the time and trying to make jokes about I don't know what else they're talking about and getting railroaded having him interrupt you every two minutes um, and just all that sort of nonsense stuff it's better just to kind of sit with these guys and pontificate about all this stuff but the funny thing that I find interesting in general is maybe it's an American thing 
because I feel like a lot of people in the UK, we kind of call it out a lot more. But why do you guys kind of put up with people who were born on like third base, like lecturing you on how to live your life? Like people who legitimately have had all the privileges in life given to them, you know, by luck of being born into a particular family, but then they have the gumption and the neck to stand up and tell you, regular people, how to live your lives. Like, how, why do you guys put up with that shit? I don't get it. Like, like th that guy is legitimately, like, from a wealthy family, has had no real hardships in his life at all. Zero. Z in terms of, like, the regular hardships that regular guys have to have to go through. But then he tries to act like the regular guy. or the uh, Like, that's what I've never understood also. Like, why not just lean into your privilege and kind of use it as a kind of something to talk about? Like, hey, guys are usually like this, but I'm kind of different. Why try and work? Try, try, try and act like you're from the working class. I don't understand this sort of stuff. Um, because you always find out a lot of these guys that do these right-wing political commentary type of guys, they try and act like they're for the working class, but they're always for their own self-interest. Most of these guys, most of these guys that try and run this right wing grift of being conservative and having conservative values, they're nothing but they're just out for themselves. And if there's one place that you can be out for yourselves, but then also pretend like you are working for the people, it's obviously in politics, whether you're on the left or you're on the right. They kind of exploit that thing in both sides of it. Um, but yeah, I find that really weird personally for me. But again, if I'm just looking at it from the you know, zoomed out perspective. I think it's a good move for Callan. I think at his age, he's nearly 60 years old, maybe 70, who knows? It's probably best that he does evolve on from talking about dicks and chicks on the flipping fire and the kid with Brendan, with Brendan Shaw, who's interrupting him every two seconds and where he's not really respected and he's looked at as a bit of a dweeb. Maybe when he goes on this show, he won't need to be fucking man spreading his legs so much to prove how masculine and alpha he is. He can kind of settle down and talk, you know, about things in a worldly intellectual based sort of manner and not have to try and put, you know, boost himself up to look kind of weird that might help in that regard and obviously his Hollywood career is over too so this was the only, only option left so I think that makes a lot of sense and clearly as well Brian, Brian Callen even though he's been in the podcasting space for a minute Brian Callen was around for ages he's been around since Joe Rogan started podcasting but he's never been able to be consistent and to be kind of um there with his content he's always kind of dropped things here and there so that's why brendan was obviously a godsend because he's kind of always say what you want about the guy but brendan's business in terms of making sure that show gets out every week is on point he's been able he's been the one consistent thing in brian cannon's life but he's also a bit of a employee brian he needs somebody to kind of hire him to do stuff like he can't just do it on his own so if he can't do it on his own link it up with someone like a crowder who has a you know a ship that's kind of on its way doing its thing you just plug and play is the best way to go about things so it probably is a good decision from him to make going forward but i do envision like a lot of people are saying on the subreddit that most likely this will mean the end of the fire and the kid as we know it and most likely what we'll see in the next few weeks probably or maybe months is maybe um months i said months sorry well, you maybe you'll see brendan going back to that other thing that he was doing the fire and the kids uh, with a z and maybe trying to you know employ some um some uh, racially diverse cast of people to mix up the show, you know, <laughs> and try and make it work that way, which obviously isn't going to work because they all run away after a while. Anyway, they get the clout off him and then they just go and do their own thing. So do I'll, I'll be really surprised if Brenda does. So if Brian does hang around there for a while, I'll be super surprised, but that's the big news there.